Hey, welcome back to Geek Toolkit. In this episode, I want to go back to the MPCNC or the mostly printed CNC, and I want to talk a little bit about why it doesn't compare to other commercial products out there, such as an X-Carve or a Shapoko. The reason I'm doing this video is for those that have not picked up an MPCNC yet or have not built one, if you're trying to make a decision and you're doing research, you might hit some of the same roadblocks I did. The main thing that I want to address is if you're doing research for an MPCNC against those things and you're looking at like speeds or can't do aluminum and such, it can get very frustrating because the answers are very, um, they're very hard to come by. You know, if you ask somebody, well, can an MPCNC do aluminum? They might be a little bit cagey about the answer and they'll ask you a bunch of questions. I want to give you the reason for this and also how to ask these questions better in forums to get better answers that I think will be more constructive for you. The other ones are a product. A product is something that goes in a factory, it's built to spec, uh, they build a hundred of them to spec let's say and they're going to be pretty close to each other and there'll be certain sizes, you know some have like three or four sizes and the thing about that is those specs are going to be pretty well known amongst the community. They probably even have like one or two softwares they use, stuff like that. The MPCNC is a project, which means everyone is different. Um, if you were to, if you think about it, the filament that you use to, to print most of the machine, that's the name, if you were to do two prints with different humidity levels or different brand filaments or um, different slicers, you would have two different prints, uh, it, different qualities possibly. Uh, one might be more rigid, one might not. So if that's how sensitive this thing is to variables, and you talk about variables for filaments and skill with a 3D printer and software and quality of a 3D printer, you've got a million variables before you even get into the machine build. Then there's how square you build your machine, which is going to affect the accuracy. There's things like how well you can use the software. CAM, which is called computer-aided modeling, on two MPCNCs, if they were identical, the CAM skill of the user alone can widely vary the output of the device or how fast it outputs. Your material is going to affect that as well. Your build size is going to vary. So these are all variables that can affect how your machine performs. And so that's why you're probably going to have a really hard time asking a question. Let me phrase it a totally different way. Let's, let's forget about CNCs for a second. Say we were to ask you, how many people can use a swimming pool? That question's too broad, it's too ambiguous. There's no way to really answer that question. Uh, you might have other questions that you'd ask that person that, that asked it and say, you know, well, how, many, um, how big are the people? How are they using the pool? How big is the pool? How deep is the pool? Stuff like that. See, there's other questions to get rid of that ambiguity. So if I were to ask somebody that owns a swimming pool, how many people can use your swimming pool for as a lap pool, that person's very familiar with their swimming pool, they know their build volume, and they're gonna be able to answer that in a much better way. That's kind of the lesson of this video, is if you wanna know things about the MPCNC, and there are things that you have in mind that you wanna do, I would ask the community, somebody that's built it, how, you know, their experience. If you wanna know if the MPCNC can cut aluminum, you're gonna get answers all over the place. But if you ask a person, who has cut aluminum with their MPCNC, how they did it, what trade-offs they made, what build decisions they made. You will get answers that are golden. They'll be so much better. And that, I think, is the most productive way to move forward with your research. This is why I say you can't really compare the MPCNC to a Shapoko because an MPCNC is a, a million different machines. It can be, a, you know, that's really the, I don't say it as a downside, I say it's a strength. There's a lot of innovation in this machine, a lot of flexibility, but that power of that flexibility is also why it's so hard to get straight answers on it. That being said, you can also ask, has anyone been able to? Has anyone been able to um, etch steel with an MPCNC? Absolutely, I've seen it done. If you wanna know how to do that, you might wanna ask those people what build volume they use, what bits do they use? They're glad to answer it. Aluminum, same thing. Ask them what build volume. I've seen it done. Hopefully this video kind of gives you an idea of how to get more productive answers from your questions for the MPCNC. I think that as a project, it is absolutely amazing what the community's done. 
There's a huge community around it and it's only growing day by day. I just see more and more builds coming out and I'm really proud to be a part of it. So thank you for all of those of you that have been following me, that have been asking for more CNC videos. I'm, uh, I still have a garage, if you're following my saga, I still have a garage uh, that I can use my CNC in. I do have a plan that I'm hoping to execute on in the next month or so. And when I do, I'll let you know. Until then, I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit and uh, keep the questions coming in the comments and subscribe if you want more videos like this. I'll talk to you soon.